last time I spoke about peak fiction. So now I'm covering the opposite, bottom fiction, because apparently people really wanted to see something obscure. Unfortunately for you, I never said it was going to be a hidden gem. If anything, this series should stay hidden. Now then, I want you to cast your mind back to the before times of 2018, where a younger me still had a will to live and some light in his eyes. Back then, I actually had some time to waste binging random things just to see if they were any good or not. But either way, I came across this show called huh? Rewrite D. Or is it Rewrite Did? Normally I'd care about the pronunciation. But I'm going to put as much effort into this video as the writers of the show did. So, uh, pretty much none at all. I'm a huge fan of time travel stories, as you can tell. <laughs> as well as sci-fi, so the genres were already something promising. And after seeing some of the talent working in the show, I had to give it a go. And that's pretty much where the price stops, unfortunately. So, let's take a look for the first episode, and see how many times the show manages to drop the ball before it even gets to its main premise. We're greeted with some nonsense flash-forward scene. Now normally a scene like this is supposed to intrigue the viewer, especially in a story about time travel. But knowing the context, this scene really makes no sense, and it's just there to set up false expectations in hopes of making you think that the writers know what they're doing. Spoilers? They don't. After the title card, we're shown some Elon Musk Cybertruck looking CGI cars in a city that looks straight out of those world effects didn't exist memes. And if you can believe it, this is actually our protagonist, the reader. Now this is the part where I would usually give a description of his character, but even after watching the show twice, I really can't tell you much aside from the fact that this dude is really bad at decision making. Anyway, all you need to know is that Dorita and his buddy Nathan are code monkeys working for who else but Donald fucking Trump. I have many, many friends. Did I mention that this came out in 2018? And instead of building walls or hosting The Apprentice, he's the CEO of Skynet, essentially. Dorita and Nathan try to explain a major issue with Skynet, or disease as they're called, that could result in a disaster straight out of a Will Smith movie. No. Damn dude, I guess someone must have written down true instead of false in the line that said, if number of commands greater than or equal to 10,000, go full terminator mode, true. Luckily though, these two already have a fix for this bug, and I actually want to implement it now, instead of working on it from home for three days trying to quote unquote fix it, like your average software developer. But apparently remote patching is just too cool for 2050. Since Trump goes ballistic, due to not wanting to record an order of faulty killer robots that are being sent to your local freedom fighter warlord as they speak. So, after being shot down, Dorita does what every person with a good conscience would do in this situation. He takes the issues into his own hands. Psych! That would be the smart thing to do. So he takes the only logical option left to him, and he goes to his friend's daughter's birthday party. I fucking shit you not. Now here's the real question. When the writers decided to populate Margie's birthday party with only her dad's friend and one friend of her age, did they successfully predict that technology will pull us more further apart and leave us more isolated than ever, devoid of any real connections? Or did they only care to include characters that were relevant to the plot? Oh, and of course, the TV just so happens to turn on with a news report of something relevant to the story. Does anyone know the impact these so-called VTubers are having on our nation's youth? No one stopped to ask? To think? Maybe they're making the next generation parasocial coomers. Don't believe me? Consider this. This line was written by Tesla shareholders. I too read a thesis on time travel when I was eight years old. And we pause for a moment. This is legitimately the mechanic behind the time travel in this anime. I am not joking. Thinking really hard is literally how time travel works here. I thought I was watching sci-fi, not fantasy. Like, can you at least not give me some mumbo jumbo about black holes and CRT TVs? I know it's a small ask, but I really appreciate it when fantastical elements of a piece of fiction actually make internal sense within the story and aren't just powered by contrivance. Especially when it comes to time travel. Like, come on dude, you're literally making something like Life is Strange's time travel mechanics look consistent and competent in comparison. I'm sure that giving the MacGuffin to Magic instead of her father, who you saw literal minutes ago, is a very smart and rational idea. 
And I'm sure this isn't another contrivance for the story setup to actually function. Well, whatever. I'm sure he didn't give away his only access key. I'm sure he has a spell one that he'll hold on to. Motherfucker. So after giving the only other access key to his dad, he gets some like vague warning, even though like it's pretty obvious that Dorito only cares about doing his job and not about this mysterious conspiracy. アンドレは俺たちを殺す気だと。ディジーの軍用化は開発中から。わあ、ちょっと anti magma squad, get ready. Oh, shit. Jesus Christ. Why'd you give me this fucking thing? I thought it was airsoft. So not only do Trump's band of deplorables shoot the car instead of Dorito, who's literally standing still, making himself a perfect target, but the explosion sends him flying completely unharmed, just off the side of the road to where he just happens to fall into a sussy vent. Anyhow, the next scene is the most unintentionally funny thing I've seen in ages. Even after rewatching this episode for this video, I had to laugh out loud for how absurd the scene was. So, get this, Dorita bumps into this cryo chamber looking thing, and then just instantly lies down in it, in the most nonchalant way possible. Like, what? I'm sorry, but there must have been a better way to do this. Like, the facility is still clearly working and has some automatic functions. I'm sure it would have been less far-fetched for it to just put him in the cryo chamber because of his low vital signs. But I suppose Dorita is really committed to his role of making absurdly stupid decisions for the convenience of the plot. And if you can believe it, that's actually pretty much the first episode. Our protagonist wakes up in 2060, and instead of being greeted by Keanu Reeves, he instead awakens to a dull and an exciting post-apocalyptic future. You can probably figure out the plot from here. Dorita meets up with some friendly locals and Maje's friend in order to find Maje and get his hands on that key that he so intelligently misplaced earlier on. All the while using his funny, just think about it lol, time travel powers, and sitting through way too many exposition scenes. But I'll leave the rest of the story for the masochists among you. And after seeing some of the talent working in the show, I had to give it a go. So in the end, Takuya Satao, the chief behind works such as Steinsgate, alongside the acclaimed character designer Yoshitoshi Abe, managed to make one of the dullest looking, nonsensical and forgettable pieces of media I've ever seen. No cap, Bruh. I didn't even remember this series existed until I had to really think of something niche that I've seen. I would have been much happier if this was some laughably bad series such as like Berserk 2016 or Exxon, but this show is just so bland and unremarkable that it really deserves its spot as some seasonal that literally no one ever talks about. Anyways, I really appreciate you guys suffering alongside me for this video. I don't want to do this kind of outro thing often, but I did not expect the ReZero video to pop off that hard. So, thank you for stopping by and leaving a nice comment. It really makes making these videos feel worthwhile. Expect a new video from me every two to three weeks from now on. Till next time.